Two changes will happen to your account this quarter. First is a rebalance of the existing funds in your account. The second is the addition of a mid-cap growth fund and the removal of real estate and technology. That raises the question, why rebalance? Three reasons, capture incremental return, maintain your target risk, and increase your expected return. For example, say you invest 50% of your account in growth stocks and 50% of your account in value stocks. At the end of the year, growth stocks have outperformed value stocks. When you look at your account statement, you might see 60% of your account in growth stocks and 40% of your account in value stocks. What has happened? The expected risk or chance of a loss in your portfolio has increased since growth stocks are more risky or volatile than value stocks. We would recommend rebalancing your portfolio to the original target of 50% growth and 50% value. You may capture a few extra dollars of return in your account next year if value stocks perform better than growth stocks. Academic studies have shown that frequent rebalancing improves long-term returns, and the Yale Endowment, one of the largest U.S. college endowments, rebalances daily. While this can increase your returns, you can obtain similar results by rebalancing quarterly while minimizing any transaction costs. The second thing we recommend on an annual basis is to review your assumptions for the expected risk and return of different asset classes. We call this reallocation, but it is also a form of rebalancing designed to help you maintain the target risk of your account as determined by your answers to our risk tolerance questionnaire and your age. Most of us can only handle a certain amount of loss in our portfolios before we feel a lot of regret and are tempted to sell everything and go to cash. By reviewing the reasons you chose the investments and weights in your accounts on a regular basis, you take away some of this emotion and help yourself make better long-term investing decisions. At the beginning of each year, through our quantitative modeling, we evaluate the expected return, expected risk, and correlation of many asset classes. We update the inputs to our models and look for combinations of asset classes that will help increase the expected return for each portfolio while maintaining the expected level of risk. This year, the Artesis model suggests that we will be able to improve expected returns by dropping the asset classes of real estate and technology and adding the asset class of mid-cap growth. Once again, foreign and emerging markets do not appear in our portfolios.